were you ever confused when to use dot send and when to use dot call or did you never understand what is the difference between call and a transaction well then you're at the right spot gm 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 what's up clubbers welcome to web3 club and in today's video we're going to learn what is the difference between a call and a transaction this is like the very basic stuff so today i'm going to take you through some slides that i've prepared and in the end we'll go through small bits of code to understand when to use what and actually how to use them as well but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you have any suggestions please let me know in the youtube comments and if you want to contact me for sponsorship or some sort of consultation my email address is in the about section of my youtube channel if you have any suggestions for me please let me know in the youtube comments down below and if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out all right with that said let's get started so today we are going to learn what is the difference between a call and a transaction or the difference between reading the blockchain and writing on the blockchain first up what is a call so technically speaking a call is a way to invoke a smart contract function without broadcasting it to the network what it really means is that we directly read the state from the node and we don't change anything on the blockchain so as i said it doesn't change any blockchain or contract state so it's called a call it's fairly private it doesn't really go out anywhere and it's a read only operation because you know it doesn't change the state and because it's a read only operation and it doesn't change the state it does not require any gas plus we don't really need to contact other nodes to get the value so we don't really need to incentivize anyone else so again we don't need any gas for calls so this is an example of a call you can see that in the contract tab there's a read contract tab and in the read contract tab you can see that there are a bunch of methods like name punks offered for sale total supply decimals and what not now these values anybody can retrieve without even logging into the chain you just need to make the call to your own node and it returns the value so as you can see we are getting the value name uh, directly as the crypto punks and the total supply directly as 10000 we don't really need to spend any gas to get this information now what is a transaction now transaction is something that is broadcasted to the entire network it changes the state of the blockchain and the smart contract and therefore it's a write operation and because it's a write operation it requires the user to sign the transaction so that is why whenever we are doing a transaction a pop-up comes for metamask and other wallets as well where you need to sort of sign the transaction and then it only goes ahead so transactions cannot be done without the private keys and because you know they change the state it needs gas and the gas is paid in the native tokens like eth or ether for ethereum sol for solana matic for polygon similarly we need bnb for bnb chain i believe avax for avalanche and so on and so forth now if you want to see the transactions of a smart contract go to the contract tab in the ether scan and then you know there's a write contract tab over there now in the write contract you can see that this enter bid for punk you know if you want to bid for a crypto punk this is how you will do it because you know a bid requires change on the blockchain state you need to connect first your wallet to the etherscan website and you can see that the connect to web3 button is present over there only once you connect you will be able to you know interact with all the other methods you know once you enter the bid you can also accept the bid as a owner and again for that also you need to be connected and all these things require gas because you know they change the state on the blockchain now the big question is when to use either of them broadly speaking if you want to read data and that's all you want to do it's a call if you want to write data it's a transaction so for example if you want to check balance of a user for erc20 token or an nft you use a call but if you want to transfer the tokens from a user to another user you want to transfer an nft from a user to another user you use a transaction now let me show you some front end code to see what really it looks like 
Now this is an old contract that I had developed in one of my videos. Um, you can see that the contract is available over here with the code. What the code does is basically it increases the count if somebody calls increment and you can see that there are two tabs one is read contract which returns the count which is 65 and there's a write tab uh, which you know you with which you can increase the count so if i connect uh, my metamask over here and once connected if i click write it will ask uh, for me to sign this transaction as you can see over here and once I, you know, click confirm and sign the transaction, the pop-up goes away and now we're just waiting for the transaction to complete. And you can see that I already have a view your transaction button. If I open that, you can see that it is right now in the mempool and the transaction should ideally be complete in any moment because now it says it shows complete on my metamask. So it should be complete any moment. And if I go to the transactions tab, you can see the transaction has been succeeded 29 seconds ago and it increased the value from I, I believe it was 65 to now which is it is 66 all right so this is what you know the read and write does this is the read this is the call and this was the transaction this was the write okay now in the front end code what this looks like is for finding the value you can see that we have a dot call over here so um, we have a contract object from web3.js if you don't know what this means and how does this work i have a video uh, for in explaining how to interact with a smart contract so go check that out i'll link that in the description and yeah so this is how we do a call dot call so if there were any arguments you would send them over here in the count and then you will do a dot call and that sort of returns the value all right Similarly, if we want to increment, which is to send a transaction, we use a dot send for sending a transaction. And then the dot send requires some things from us like the from and sometimes the gas value and whatnot. Now, what does this look like? Um, let me just open it. So I've opened that page in my browser and you can see that the current count it so shows as 66. My wallet is already connected, uh, you can see, and it says the wallet address. If I click on increase count, it will basically open a pop-up on MetaMask, as you can see. And if I click confirm, it will wait for the transaction to go through, and then it will refresh and show the current count as 67. So let me just click confirm once again and see, show you actually how the transaction goes through. This pop-up came up because of the dot send, all right? So with dot send in place, I click confirm, and now we are waiting for the transaction to complete and in the meanwhile i can show you that uh, you know it says document the update current count uh, function you can see that you know it waits for the for the value to come and then it updates the count in current count and the current count if you go and see in the html it says current count uh, span id it starts with zero and it's it changes its value to something right so now we are waiting for the transaction to succeed and if I go and refresh you can see that it hasn't sort of succeeded yet and voila the transaction has succeeded the current count has increased to 67 and if you go back to the to the transactions you can see a transaction has been included and if I go and read the contract again and open it you can see this time it is 67. So this is how basically you use uh, the dot call versus dot send the call versus the transaction read versus the write on the blockchain and that's it these are this is one of the basic examples that i wanted to explain because a lot of people get confused on this and ask a lot of questions especially on my discord server so i wanted to clear this up if you have any more questions please let me know in the youtube comments down below if you like this video till now, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, please, if you haven't. If you want to sponsor a video, send me a message or ask for some consultation. My email address is in the about section of my YouTube profile. And if you have a specific question that, you know, general audience cannot answer and that requires a lot of back and forth, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Till then, bye-bye.